Hey, I have a question for you. If you want to become a, a cloud pre-sales architect, what you will do? Option one, you will surf for some online videos, you will do some online courses and certification where you will not get any online real-time experience like resource loading, how to qualify a solution, how to make their first estimation, how to do the pricing model, how to create the, the deliverables, how to create these successful, measurable tangibles, right? Option two, keep watching this video where we'll be discussing about the proposal template, how to do resource loading and the pricing model calculations, milestones, deliverables, success measurements. Before we uh, proceed to the, um, the demo, I request you to please subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, please click on like. And if you want to share with your friends, please do the share button. Thank you. Let's get into the demo now. So, um let's quickly um, understand what will be the real-time topics that pre-sales cloud architect will focus in his day-to-day -day job okay now the topics that we'll be covering is how a pre-sales architect will qualify the proposal who are the stakeholders that he will be interacting how will be a proposal template template look like what is the high level project plan that he will be preparing? How he will do the efforts estimates? How he will be preparing the resource loading? And what are the various pricing models that pre-sales architect will consider for any proposal? Okay. All right. So the first one is how to qualify the proposal. So let's understand how a cloud pre-sales architect will qualify any proposal. So he will be, he or she will be looking at the first thing is technology readiness. As we know, most of the proposals are, you know, a cloud proposals today. Um, either it can be Azure, AWS or GCP, Oracle. So what is the readiness from this cloud infra point of view? And what is the readiness from the application development? Similarly, integration and support. Do we have that capability in-house in the company? Second thing is team readiness. Resource availability like architects. It can be infra architect, application architects, leads, developers, engineers to support this proposal. And the third point is, what is the proposal value, the overall? It is like more than $10,000, $25,000 or something. So that, you know, uh, it should be, uh, every company will have a, a minimum proposal value. Below that, they will not take, consider that proposal. They will directly push it back to the sales. Hey, the proposal overall value is less than the minimum so we are sorry and the last criteria is when is the project expected start time in a week in two weeks in a month or in three months because if it is less than a month then it is very highly impossible for the you know from the technology readiness point of view from the team readiness point of view no one can accommodate it so it should be more than a month the ideally speaking it should be between one and three months then the architect will qualify the proposal okay so the next thing is about the, the stakeholders right the pre-sales cloud architect will be interacting with various stakeholders in the company for example lob leads which means business heads practice leads, COE heads, and all those things, and COE groups. Center of excellence groups, it can be cloud, it can be database, it can be you know, application, it can be networking, it can be development, and similarly technology managers to identify for the resource availability and you know any architects available, uh, any implementation leads available or not. Similarly, 
um, the uh, you know the pre-sales architect will be interacting with the application architects to understand uh, the complexity of the project in terms of designing you know build develop implementation all those things and also he will be also interacting with uh, marketing and sales teams to understand you know uh, was there any updates from the client or when will be the next you know uh, uh, meeting that set up with the client for any sort of a walkthrough session uh, any sort of information he'll just uh, coordinate with all these uh, stakeholders right to understand you know uh, the, the proposal uh, in depth the proposal scope of work and resource availability technology readiness across the company to support this proposal all right so the next one is about the the proposal template let me quickly bring up the proposal template as i said the proposal template it it's a spreadsheet uh, format that most of the companies will use today so this is the sample proposal uh, template where we will be using to calculate the efforts estimation so the, there are different pages here one is the tasks which is your overall you know project uh, tasks that will be performed by various teams it can be development team it can be api team it can be some cloud teams integration teams you know devops testing and qa documentation and kt so all the teams of the architects the implementation leads will come up with the list of activities and uh, they will also come up with the estimated total efforts to perform how many hours for each and every activity so you can call it as this is a let's say this is a phase this is a phase milestone and these are all the various activities so in in phase one or in milestone one ui development these are all the various tasks and this is the efforts the total efforts for this are coming around like 585 hours right so depending upon you know it may change depending upon the the size of the project the, the work i mean the scope and everything similarly in api development what you will be doing so depending upon your project the line items will change for sure and you know the tasks the the phases the activities will change but this is the template format we'll be using you should understand right now for any uh, you know project technically or non technically there should be some sort of assumptions that based on assumptions you came you identified these you know tasks and you came up with these efforts so you need to come up you need to write the assumptions and also what will be out of scope for example like you know coordinating with the vendor coordinating you know uh, licensing uh, issues any existing uh, known issues in the infrastructure or application wise there will be complete out of scope as part of the project that's an example and similarly the parameters like you know how much will be the design how much will be the uh, configuration how much will be the integration how much will be the infrastructure provisioning so different percentage so that you know you will understand um, the i mean you know the efforts has been uh, you know validated properly and now the very important thing is the resource loading so this is how it will be if you look at so we have a sprint wise and we have the role here and every week it's five days so it's like 40 uh, hours like eight hours into five if you are marking here 40 hours that means it is one resource full time 100 percent for the whole week and the other thing is most of the companies follow that one sprint is equal to two weeks either you can change that you know one sprint into two weeks or three weeks depending upon the length of the project here uh, uh, we have considered you know one sprint is two weeks then if you see that you know it is uh, if, if you are having like 80 that means we have two dotnet developers 
now in a in in a week one we say that hey it's like around like 200 hours offshore and on site it is like 40 hours so because we will be having resources from offshore and on site on site is outside india it can be global us uk uh, anywhere offshore is in india now how exactly we came up with this with these now if you scroll up this is how it will be so if we'll be loading say one resource developers two resource qa tester one resource so so this is how a normal um, resource loading will be done it will be converted into hours here and then converted into dollars here okay so this is the main resource loading template format anyone uses across uh, uh, you know uh, enterprises or anywhere and you look at that see there is a phases like you know development phase you know uh, implementation phase hyper care right depending upon what are the phases you want to do so and each sprint will say again you know you will be having uh, four or five sprints in a month and each sprint is like two weeks that's how the the calculation should be because when we're explaining to the customer you won't be sharing this spreadsheet you will be adding you will be just putting the table hey these many months the development phase is like three months with uh, six seven sprints that is what and the and the total cost is uh, some x dollars a hundred dollar i mean a um, hundred thousand dollars and the resources are like you know six one offshore and one on site so this is the discussion we'll be giving uh, data will be giving in the proposal but not the spreadsheet the spreadsheet is for the internal uh, reference for the internal discussion between the stakeholders okay so this is about the the proposal uh, efforts estimation template you will be having the tasks you will be having assumptions all right so let me quickly give a, a, a recap of uh, what so far we uh, you know finished one is we discussed about how to qualify the proposal we also discussed about the stakeholders we discussed about the proposal template and also covered um, resource loading and um, efforts estimates the pending uh, topics are one is the high level project plan and the final one is the pricing models which we will be covering now now if we talk about the high level project plan so as you know we already uh, discussed about the the various phases and the tasks as part of the proposal template in spreadsheet format now this is how the high level project plan will be showcased to the customers so the phase one it can be infra application discovery with some baseline activities and also the Phase two is going to be a new architecture design. The phase three uh, is an implementation and testing. A TBD means it's to be decided with the short form we'll be using in the slides. And the post implementation support is like Go Live and Hypercave, all those things. Uh, support services, that's um, again uh, to be decided. And uh, below you'll be uh, you know giving a team composition for phase one and phase two like how many developers architects engineers prob uh, program manager or project manager delivery manager so this is just a template so just to give a high level you know uh, understanding for the client so that you know how uh, how exactly we are delivering the whole you know the implementation plan so that they can you know also plan accordingly because this will go through a lot of iterations, a uh, lot of reviews internally because uh, when we put across this kind of a, a project plan in front of the customer, the customer uh, uh, no, uh, you know, teams, for example, like their IT team, their engineering team, their development teams, their testing teams, their architects, their delivery heads, their you know, uh, VPs or CTOs, CEOs, CFOs, CIOs, will come with a lot of questions for sure and we have to justify ourselves there in the discussions so this is a high level project plan 
I will I will share this uh, template uh, in the um, in a description and using a, with a Google Drive. So if you if you're looking for something like this, please go ahead and download it. Okay. So the the last topic uh, that we'll be discussing is a pricing models. So you can see we have uh, various pricing models that we will be using as part of various proposals. The first one is the time and material, which is nothing but a fixed hourly and into number of resources. As we discussed before, you know that we are loading resources like architect, implementation leads, developers, you know, uh, pro uh, project manager. So no matter how many resources we will be loading, there will be a fixed hourly price, maybe at $25, $35, that's a called a blended price. That is one method. The second method is for the time and material is per resource pricing hourly. Because we are, uh, you know, loading the resources like architect, engineers, leads, developers, delivery managers, each and every resource will have its own pricing hourly price that can start from $35 to around like and $150 or maybe more than that. So that is one uh, per resource pricing hourly into number of resources that you are loading like per, per day or per week, per month, depending upon the phases. And on top of it, we can also give a discount percentage to the client, maybe a assessment. We're going to take like two or three weeks, which can be a discount. It's a free assessment for you. And also the the milestone wise pricing and you know because how exactly you want to uh, do the billing model for the customer it can be a sprint wise it can be a milestone wise it can be a phase wise you can define depending upon the you know uh, the customer relationship with you right so this is about the pricing models so i will also share this uh, slide in the uh, description uh, and I'll provide the Google Drive for you. Okay, so this is so far we discussed. Um, so I guess I've, I've, I've completed all the topics. One is the how to qualify the proposal, what are stakeholders, uh, a proposal template, project plan, a force estimates, resource loading, pricing models. So if you do have any questions, please use the comment section. And if you like it, please click on like. And if you would like to share with your friends, please share this video and support me. And I would like to, uh, uh, you know, a big thank for you for watching till end. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much and have a nice day ahead. Bye for now. This is SK signing off.